Welcome to this service for Sunday the 9th of May. We've just started last week a little series in the prophet Jonah, a very short and punchy book. Uh, I've given it the title A Reluctant Prophet and we're going to explore more of what's going on in that book and for the lessons for us today. Let's hear these words again from Paul's letter to the Corinthian churches uh, to begin our service. Jesus died for all, so that we who live should no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for us. All, all God's, God's promises, promises are yes in Christ, Christ and, and through him we reply, reply Amen, to the, the glory, glory of God. God. Amen. Amen. Some words of praise from Psalm 86. O Lord our God, we, we will praise, praise you with all our heart. O Lord our God, we, we will proclaim your greatness forever. Great is your constant love for us. You, you have, have saved, saved us from, from the, the grave, grave itself. itself. Amen. Our opening hymn is a great song based on one of the Psalms as we think about how God is our refuge and our strength. sung about the Lord of hosts and he is the almighty one let's come before him with humility to confess our sins almighty God, God our, our heavenly father, father we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word, word and, and deed and in, and in what, what we have left undone for your son our Lord Jesus Christ's sake forgive, forgive us all that is past and grant that, that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive God's forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ. He has taken up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that brings us peace, and by his wounds we are healed. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Let's also pray about our collection for God's work. O Lord God, who provides and sustains life, we offer you these gifts as tokens of our time and labour. Receive the offering of our lives and continually feed us with your grace, that in the midst of death all creation might feast on your unending life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of life, your spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and writers of scripture. Your spirit draws us to Christ and helps us to acknowledge him as Lord. We ask that you send your spirit to give us deeper insight, encouragement, faith and hope through the proclamation of the Easter Gospel. Amen. This week's reading is Jonah chapter 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in for ever, but you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs, but I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to join in a statement of faith taken from Paul's letter to the Corinthians and also his letter to the Colossians, some of the earliest statements of Christian faith. This is the good news that we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ, Christ died, died for our sins, sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the Church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. So let's spend some time in prayer. Faithful God, your Son Jesus Christ gave us a new commandment of love for each other, and so we ask you to teach us to love you by obeying your command to love our neighbours as ourselves. Help us to recognise your image in each person that you have made, to show care and concern that is practical and kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for your church, which day by day gathers to praise you and to hear your holy word. We pray for our Christian sisters and brothers worshipping around the world in small rural churches, urban churches, the great city cathedrals, as well as linking up through the internet during this time of the pandemic. We especially ask that, that although we have been unable to meet in the same room for many months, we may draw near to the same Lord. Give us a sense of expectation as we come to meet with you and then to go out to serve you in the world. May you bless our ministry team whose preaching and teaching inspire us with the message of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator and sustainer of all things, the world so often seems to be in a violent and fearful place. 
we are deeply saddened by the news of tragic deaths in our country through greed, jealousy, prejudice, drug wars, terrorism, or no apparent reason. Give us the strength to love our enemies and to pray for those who by violent acts distort and disrupt society. May those who have caused harm be humbled before Christ. May those who suffer its consequences discover the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, whose welcome of prodigals to return to you was one of grace and mercy, for all who enjoy close relationships with family and friends, we pray that we may become better at welcoming others. For those who feel alone and isolated, that they may be drawn near. May encourage our gifts of hospitality and service, so that we do not become possessive of those we love or live selfishly the things that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, the giver of life and health, we bring before your healing touch those we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. May you deepen our love for our neighbours, especially those who are weak. Help us to console the sorrowful and give hope to the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, who sent Jonah to the people of Nineveh, in order to turn their hearts to you. May you send us out into the world as your faithful witnesses and servants to bear witness to the gospel truth through a message of reconciliation and through our acts of faith and hope and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. What does it 
take to change a rebel into a servant of God? It often takes a jolt or trouble to actually return us to God. Jonah had fled to avoid being part of God's plan. It took a near-death experience to rescue him. In the first chapter, we've seen how Jonah actually admitted to being the cause of all the problems for the sailors. He was fleeing from God, and this was God whipping up the sea to get his attention. The sailors had prayed before they gave him the heave-ho to chuck him into the sea, and it all went calm. The sailors were amazed at God's power. They were left in awe, and they worshipped, and were told they made vows to him. Well, Jonah's religiosity clearly stank. Rebelling against God's word landed him in deep water. But God provided a living submarine. Look at chapter 1, verse 17. The Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish three days and three nights. God saved Jonah. His undeserved favour would change a rebel into a servant, and here's how it happened in this chapter. Firstly, we see how God hears. In verse 1, we read, From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. I wonder when you're most likely to pray. It's probably when we're in trouble, isn't it? We're very quick to pray in the face of danger. We may be facing exams or hospital tests or interviews or ill health. Well, Jonah was in deep, deep trouble. He says in verse 2, In my distress I called to the Lord. Well, we have an international distress signal, don't we? SOS, SOS, save our souls. And it's only for genuine emergencies when lives are at risk. And it may be that we feel that we give an SOS type prayer to God when we're, in, when we're in the face of danger. And rather amazingly and graciously, God answered Jonah's prayer. From the depths of the grave, I called for help and you listened to my cry. Now, interestingly, earlier, Jonah had not prayed when he'd been urged by the sailors to do so or even when he heard them pray. Only when he was all at sea did Jonah pray and cry for mercy. Being swallowed by this great fish was actually a sign of hope because it showed that God was sovereign over this situation. The Lord had far more to do in Jonah and through Jonah. And so his plan wasn't just to let Jonah die at sea. God had not abandoned him, but provided this miraculous rescue from death. Well, it's interesting when we turn into the New Testament how our salvation from sin and death is described as a rescue operation. Listen to this from Colossians chapter 1. For he, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. There's a transfer that takes place from death to life, from darkness to light, from the kingdom of the devil into the kingdom of the son he loves, all through the forgiveness of sins. Well, it was God's grace that moved Jonah to pray. And only when changed by grace will we pray too. And when we pray, God hears. But secondly, God intervenes in verse 3 to 7. Jonah clearly saw God's hand at work in the events, the dramatic events. We read in verse 3, You hurled me into the, into the deep, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled all about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. Jonah's life was hanging in the balance. The sea is so powerful and dangerous. I remember a simple incident when I was swimming in the sea, and a wave completely took me out. I was completely disorientated. I didn't know what up and down, where it was. I had no idea at all and felt a slight panic until I could suddenly see the light blue of the sky and I could come to the surface and all was well. Do you know, even a small incident like that, it stuck in my mind. Imagine Jonah, how much this experience must have profoundly stuck with him for the rest of his life. Jonah was in peril. He was a man overboard in a raging ocean. In fact, it's a picture, isn't it, of all of humanity. 
all of humanity is out of its depth and powerless to do anything about its plight and its predicaments. God alone can do it. And God intervenes to save Jonah. It looked as though he'd entered a fortress of death with no escape. He says in verse 4, I've been banished from your sight, yet I will look again at your holy temple. Jonah had gone far from God. He'd rejected all the privileges which he'd enjoyed, all the blessings he'd known of God. He's in a wretched state. Jonah recalls the temple with its sacrifice, which is the means of being atoned for his sins and forgiveness and a restoration to God. How wonderful that is. We are helpless, but not hopeless. Our spiritual distance from God can be changed. It can be resolved as we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. As Jesus died on the cross, do you remember the words he said? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, the answer is that Jesus was forsaken for us in order that we never need be forsaken. He was abandoned so that we don't need to be. His death atones for our sins. Jesus would also say of himself in Matthew chapter 12, for one greater than the temple is here. You see, Jesus' death for our sins, his sacrifice was the ultimate sacrifice, the sacrifice that gathered up all the sacrifices. He was the perfect one. He dies for you and me. He's also the priest offering that sacrifice. He fulfills the whole temple system in order that we can be reconciled to God. He changes rebels to servants. Well, Jonah's path to this point had been one of deep descent. We, see, we notice how he went down to Joppa in chapter 1. He went down below deck when he got onto ship. He went down into the sea. And now in chapter 2, he's gone down to the seabed. Jonah was brought to the brink of death. He'd sunk as low as he could. And he says in verse 6, To the roots of the mountains I sank down. Verse 7, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. Only when stripped of all self-sufficiency did he pray. Why do we wait till we reach that point? Why don't we pray beforehand? God is so ready to hear us when we pray. And the Lord graciously intervenes. Verse 6, but you brought my life up from the pit. O Lord, my God. The disaster of his near-death experience and miraculous deliverance leads to this overflow of gratitude. God's presence and plan were assured by the living submarine. I guess our prayers should also be fueled by gratitude for God's salvation. Actually, the New Testament is full of that as it overflows with thanksgiving. We should think about that as we remember how we were once without God and without hope in the world. But now through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the very presence of God and we are full of hope. Grace takes hold. Grace intervenes. God intervenes. Lastly, God rescues in verse 8 to 10. Now, Jonah acknowledges his folly. He really has rebelled. He's thrown it all away. He's lost out. Now, this is not a morality tale like Pinocchio. You know, the sort of Walt Disney film in which Geppetto tries to rescue, rescue Pinocchio from Pleasure Island, but he's swallowed by a whale called Monstro. Now, now this is a story of a prophet who'd gone seriously off course. And despite all his knowledge, all that upbringing, being part of the uh, school of prophets in Israel... He'd thrown it all away. What happened to Jonah the prophet is a message for us today. It reveals the truth, truth that we need to listen to. One person says of this book of Jonah, he says, The miracle of the great fish is not to be the focus of our attention, for then we would miss the great God. Well, what God has been doing through this disastrous set of events is actually to change the heart of Jonah. That's the miracle in this book. Look at verse 8, how Jonah clearly has repented. 
Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. This is like the prodigal son, isn't it? He has just wasted his life and now he remembers his father and comes to his senses. There's a parallel here, isn't there, in Jonah's life. The world's idols, they offer so much, don't they? We think of fame, how people want it. Youth, they don't want to lose it. Image, we want to get it. Qualifications, we want to credit ourselves with them. Wealth, we want more. Ourselves, we want to put ourselves at the centre. Status, we long to have it. But idols have no life. They have no power to save us. The Lord is trustworthy and faithful. Faithful. Salvation belongs to the Lord, says Jonah in verse 9, words that we should echo. Well, when Jesus revealed in Matthew chapter 12 the fact that one greater than Jonah is here, he was making a very significant claim about himself. While Jonah suffered for his own disobedience, Jesus, the perfect one, suffers as the obedient servant on behalf of others. Jonah felt banished by God, but actually was held by God all the way through. When Jesus dies on the cross, he was truly banished, separated from God, for you and for me. Jonah spent three days and nights in the belly of the fish, or the great sea monster. He was as good as dead. Jesus really died. He was put in a tomb. He was dead for three days. And then he rose again to new life. Paul teaches us in Romans that baptism is a symbol of our being joined by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. We die to sin and we rise to new life. God rescues. Well, God clearly had further work to do in the life of Jonah. The rebel who came to ruin has shown remorse. But has he truly repented? Has he yet to understand God's amazing grace more fully? Is he prepared to understand that God saves a wretch like me, like you? Well, tune in next time as we hear more about Jonah, the reluctant prophet. But for the the moment, we see in this chapter how God hears, God intervenes, God rescues. What a great God he is. And so we're going to conclude our service 
with some words of dedication to the Lord's service now. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now, now we, we give, give ourselves, ourselves to others. others. You have raised us with Christ and made us a new people. As, As people of the, the resurrection, resurrection, we will, we will serve, serve you with joy. joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help, Help us, us to glorify you in all things. things. Amen. And so we pray for God's blessing. May the God of peace, who by the blood of the eternal covenant, brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make us perfect in every good work, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Well, it's good that you're able to join us for the service. We hope that the uh, little book of Jonah will prove to be something which will stimulate your faith and walking with God. Do join us next time for the part three.